name's Marcia Kramer. I'm the Director of Legal and Legislative Programs with the National Anti-Vivisection Society. Um, we are very much in favor of student choice bills. We feel that it is the only way to ensure that students without exception are given the option of opting out of dissection. Yes, there are students who do want to dissect, who think it's really amazing, an amazing way to, to learn science. This legislation wouldn't take that away from them. It's about the other students. It's about the students who don't find this amazing, who find this really heart-wrenching to the degree that many students will leave the sciences altogether rather than face dissection, especially in the upper grades of high school. Um, like Delegate Young, I was a very avid biology um, student. This was going back quite, quite um, a few years and I dropped AP Biology my first week when I found out we were doing cats and pigs. Somehow I didn't have a problem with frogs and worms um, at the age of 14, but by the time I got to AP Biology and I was told that animals that are family pets were going to be dissected by our classroom, that was enough. Um, I did not pursue science and I think that that's a shame. I think that we need scientists who look at science both from the ethical and the mechanical end of it. Um, one of the things I do for my job is I go to the International Science and Engineering Fair every year. It's been an absolutely wonderful experience because this is a high school science fair and we see students from all over the world and the projects that they have brought to help better mankind. And in the 17 years since we started this, the shift to projects relying on animal models, to projects that have absolutely nothing to do with animals, but still are in the life science arena is absolutely amazing. And one of the reasons this can happen is because students engage in science without having to face that diff difficult ethical decision. So um, the points I'd like to make basically are we are not trying to mandate the school systems to do something that they're not already saying that they're doing. Um, I know that there's opposition saying this is already in effect. I can tell you that the National Anti-Vivisection Society for the past few years, every year has undertaken a new way of measuring what the options are and we have found that many counties are, counties are lacking in communication and policy. And the second thing is we're asking them to set that policy. We're not dictating to them it must be this way. Thank um, you. We hope that this committee will look at this new this year and decide to please accept our recommendation, the recommendation of Delegate Young, Delegate Young Thank you. Thank and you. adopt this. And the uh, last person to testify. Hi, my name is Bailey Henderson. I'm the assistant director of Animal Learn. As someone who is not so far removed from high school myself and now deals with student concerns on dissection as a part of my job, I see firsthand the emotional distress caused by forced dissection, the way in which dissection turns students away from science careers, and how forced dissection undermines the very principle our nation was founded on, individual liberty. In my experience, I never had to dissect in high school, uh, nor was it a part of the regular curriculum. I even went to a top-rated high school in my state overall and in biology. So obviously, we did not suffer academically from not dissecting, um, nor did I feel like we missed out on anything. Yet still, students across the nation are being forced into dissection against their will, um, and how well do you think these students are really learning when all they're thinking about is their moral objections the entire time they're performing this activity? Um, I receive dozens of emails a month from distressed students and parents who have no legal protection to opt out of dissection without academic repercussions. Here are a few instances which highlight the problems caused by a lack of dissection choice policy. Teresa, a parent, emailed me. My autistic 12-year-old was forced to participate in two dissections. At his 504 meeting, we discussed and agreed on virtual dissection. The teacher later forced him to participate against his and our will. Now the vice principal says it's mandatory. 
Unfortunately, states without dissection choice policies allow administra administrators to rescind their promises and cause confusion, even for students with special needs like Teresa's son. Hannah, a high school freshman, emailed me. I have been vegan for almost three years and I was told that in a few years I will be required to dissect an animal or else I will fail. My teachers and classmates know I'm vegan and they think it's no big deal and I need to suck it up. My school cares very little for the unpopular opinion. Hannah feels ostracized, singled out, and unheard by teachers, administration, and peers. Hannah has caused undue stress simply for expressing moral objections that are very serious to her. Sandy Patterson, an Animal Learn follower, said to us, I wish I could have opted out of dissection. That was the only thing stopping me from furthering my education. I need not kill a frog in order to learn psychology. Is it worth turning K-12 students away from science careers before they even have the chance to explore those careers? Does this not create a homogeneity of thought within the science community on regards to what respecting life means? I could go on with these stories, but I'll leave you with this. Why are we causing inconsistency and confusion for students and families? Why are we making students feel unheard and ostracized in their classrooms? Why are we turning countless students away from science careers when we need compassionate scientists now more than ever? Why are we ignoring the very principles our nation was founded on? Individual liberty and the right to act according to one's conscience. We sacrifice all of this when we force students against their will to participate in dissection. Not for groundbreaking research, nor for a lack of academically proven alternatives. Thank I, you. Thank you. Uh, any questions for uh, the delegate and this panel? Uh, seeing none, I'll call up the uh, first person who signed up for this bill today. Uh, Ken Stevens, is he here?